floodwaters continue to rise across the region. Thunder Bay at a Coke and candidates square off. And details of the Pope's upcoming visit to Canada. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Riley McManus. A flood warning is still in effect in the Thunder Bay area. Water levels rose again overnight, bringing the two-day total to between 34 and 50 milliliters, depending on the location. Though the latest from the region's conservation authority states that those water levels continue to decline and will further reduce throughout the weekend. Additionally, a number of highways in the northwest remain closed due to flooding. In the western reaches of our province, the city of Kenora has issued an evacuation order for residents north of the bypass for all roads north of Forche Bridge. An evacuation centre has been put in for residents who need a place to stay, and city crews are working to secure a corridor for safe exit out of the area. Residents have been asked to gather their belongings and evacuate by 6.30 this evening local time. After that, there will be no exit or entry. With flooding wreaking havoc all over the region and the ongoing evacuation of Kasheshwan and Fort Albany, another First Nation is also under a state of emergency. High water levels during the spring ice breakup have damaged the water pumping station in Martin Falls, leading to issues with their drinking water. Lee Noonan has more. The pump station that supplies water to Martin Falls was destroyed by ice that came much farther up the bank than normal. Water levels have since subsided and a temporary pump has been assembled that is now feeding the community's water treatment plant. And Chief Bruce Achnipaneskum says half the battle is won, but he says the water quality is still unsafe. Children and some of the members started breaking out in, in rashes and sores due to uh, use of uh, that uh, untreated water. And, uh, you know, part of the reason why we declared that state of emergency was to uh, actually uh, ask for an evacuation of the, of the uh, most vulnerable population of, in our community. Achnipaneskum says they've received no firm decision on whether there will be an evacuation. He expects to hear something on Monday. In the meantime, he's advising residents to boil all their water and seek medical attention right away if needed. You know, the nurses up there do a, a remarkable job, but uh, we don't have doctors in the community uh, readily available, and and uh, we're not able to see them uh, we have uh, doctors that come in maybe uh, once or twice a month for very short uh, periods of time, but uh, this is an urgent matter, and uh, you know we're looking to have our people that are afflicted by these conditions treated. Grand Chief Derek Fox says the crisis in Martin Falls is one of many throughout Nan Territory and that it's typical for slower moving problems like water quality, mental health or even COVID to get a slower response from government. But the slow the slow ones are the mental health issues. So this is almost like, OK, well, no one's really dying you know yeah you, yeah you might have uh suicides you might have s someone losing their life to covid but for some reason those those situations are not taken as serious right and uh it, it's it's left upon the community to to um deal with it oftentimes actually paneskum says it could take months before a new permanent pump station is built and weeks before the situation stabilizes enough that water quality is restored to previous levels which were still not potable. The community has been under a boil water advisory since 2005. Lee Noonan, TBT News. A murder trial is set to begin Monday for one of the two men charged in a local homicide case. It's the first criminal trial by jury at the Thunder Bay Courthouse since the start of the pandemic. 26-year-old Jonathan Massacott is pleading not guilty to second-degree murder in the death of 32-year-old William Wapoose. The victim's body was found near a walking trail in Chapels Park in September of 2014. City police late, later offered a $50,000 reward and two suspects were arrested in 2019. Massacott's trial is scheduled to last two weeks and at least 10 witnesses will be called to testify. The other accused, who was 17 at the time, will stand trial in October.
The party leaders are out pushing their platforms today, ahead of the televised debate on Monday. And as Siobhan Morris tells us, there are now questions about another Liberal candidate. The party is already two candidates short of a full slate, with the nomination deadline come and gone. The Liberal Party is again facing questions about a candidate's past, this time words from the candidate for Etobicoke Centre in a student newspaper in 2004, diminishing the difficulties faced by the LGBTQ2S plus community. Until I know the, the sort of, you know, what's behind those and, and whether or not they are in fact a true representation of what was said, I, I'm not going to comment on the specifics. Yesterday, Liberals terminated a candidate for using a homophobic slur online within hours of learning of it. The Ontario Liberal Party that I am leading is an ally and will stand in support and in solidarity with Ontario's 2S LGBTQ plus community every single day of the week and proudly so. In Windsor, PC leader Doug Ford faced questions about former cabinet minister Parm Gill, who in 2015 talked about his opposition to same-sex marriage. It's the first time I've heard of it, so I can't comment on that. But I can tell you one thing, he represents the people of Milton, he's a great minister, and I look forward to him uh, moving forward with our government. In his home riding of Guelph, Green Party leader Mike Schreiner highlighted a plan to double ODSP payments. We are asking the wealthiest in our province to pay a bit more so that the most vulnerable in our province no longer live in legislative poverty. All four leaders are gearing up for a rematch with a primetime debate on Monday night. What this debate is going to do is, is give folks a chance to, uh, to really analyze, I guess, or hear from the, the leaders and, uh, and, and hear about our plans. So how does Horvath get ready? I mostly spend time thinking about uh, the, the kinds of things that people tell me they're concerned about and how to, you know, how to best uh, articulate that. Things like the cost of living and hope for the future. Some of those vying for the Thunder Bay Atacocan seat at Queen's Park had a chance to make their pitch to voters last night. Candidates from the NDP, Liberal and Green parties participated in a debate hosted by the Thunder Bay and District Injured Workers Support Group. Vasilios Bellos reports. The debate saw incumbent Judith Monteith Farrell representing the NDP, along with newcomers Eric Arner for the Green Party and Liberal Rob Barrett. Progressive Conservative Kevin Holland and the New Blues David Tomasini were not in attendance. Healthcare and the pandemic were quickly addressed by the candidates, all criticizing the Ford government's response and explaining how their party would move forward with the issue. The lessons of SARS and we had recommendations from that and when we were faced with this pandemic, we found out that the things that were supposed to be in place were not in place. We will permanently increase lab testing capacity and stockpile rapid tests and PPE, as well as build a pandemic resilience hub. That's hiring a lot more nurses, and uh, that's something that should happen right away because we know that uh, COVID is still around and other variations could come around. The trending topic of housing, particularly affordability, was discussed. All candidates stressing they would make it easier for those looking to buy or rent. 138,000 new deeply affordable homes, including supportive housing and homes for Indigenous peoples. To use public land for to make permanently affordable housing, build 182,000 new permanently affordable house, uh, community housing units. Uh, rent controls were uh, removed by the Ford government, and that is something that needs to be uh, put back in place. The next debates for the Thunder Bay Superior North and Thunder Bay Atacocan ridings will be held by the local Chamber of Commerce. Vasilios Bellos, TBT News. The nomination period is now closed for the upcoming provincial election. Here in the Northwest, there are plenty of candidates to choose from in most ridings. Two have a whopping eight names on the ballot, and another has seven. Ryan Bonazzo has the rundown of all the area candidates. Starting off in Thunder Bay Superior North in alphabetical order, Adam Cherry is running for the Consensus Party. It's Shelby Chung for the Liberals, Stephen Huffnagel for the Ontario Party, Tracy McKinnon for the Greens, Kathy Sutari is running for the New Blues, Lise Vaugeois is the NDP candidate, Andy Wolfe is for the Northern Ontario Party, and Peng Yu is running for the PCs. In Thunder Bay, Atacokan, Eric Arner is running for the Greens, it's Rob Barrett for the Liberals, Dan Krieger for the Ontario Party, Kevin Holland is running for the PCs, 
Kenneth Jones for the Northern Ontario Party, incumbent Judith Monteith Farrell for the NDP, and David Tomasini for the New Blues. Over in Kenora Rainy River, Kelvin Boucher Chicago is with the New Blues, Larry Brayland is with the Ontario Party, Joanne Formanek Gustafson is running for the NDP, it's Richard Jonason for the Consensus Party, Catherine Kevening for the Greens, Anthony Leek for the Liberals, Janine Seymour is running independently under the name M'Ajaquan, and incumbent Greg Rickford is running once again for the PCs. And in Kiwetanung, Alex Dorn is running for the New Blues, Suzette Foster is the Green candidate, incumbent Saul Mamakwa is with the NDP, Manuela Michelisi is with the Liberals, and Dwight Monk is running for the PCs. Ryan Bonazzo, TBT News. A rally looking to highlight the treatment of workers in long-term care took place today. National Uniform members were on hand as they called out the provincial government for not addressing a lack of staffing in the field, with high rates of burnout among their workers. Jessica Clement has the details. Around 70 people took part in a march in support of workers in the healthcare field and outrage over the way they are being treated by the province. Beginning at the Friendship Garden, ralliers made their way to Hogarth Riverview Manor. That's where multiple speakers voiced their displeasure, calling out the Ford government. Get left behind. Our health care workers are going to feel the strength of all of Unifor as we come together. We... Local Unifor president Kari Jefford raised alarms over the high burnout rate in the field since the pandemic began. She wants members of the public to be aware of Bill 124, which has restricted public sector workers to a 1% increase. They're working double shifts for months on end. They haven't had any vacation time off because they don't want to walk away from their residents and their patients. Um, but the, the, that is not sustainable anymore. This has been an issue for 20 years. This, what we're seeing in the pandemic has really sh shone a light on what's been uh, happening in long-term care uh, and throughout health care over the last so many years. Unifor officials say the public should remember this when going to the polls on June 2nd. They hope Ontarians elect a government that not only says they care about the health care system, but one that will act on their promises and make things better for the workers in long-term care. We know we can do better. We know that those residents deserve better care. And we know that the conditions of work are the conditions of care. They go together. We don't, we don't fix one without fixing the other. The, the workers who've been through this humanitarian crisis want nothing more. They're only here because of their love, their respect for the people that they care for. But they can only take it so much. The burnout rate is incredible. Unifor is Canada's largest union in the private sector, representing over 300,000 workers. They feel that healthcare workers are not getting the respect they deserve. Our union has had enough and we're not going to take it. Our union is going to mobilize, our union is going to use the strength that we have across all the sectors that we represent and we're not going to take it anymore. So Doug Ford and all of these employers need to take message of the fact that Unifor is not going to stand by and let this happen. We're going to support our healthcare workers across the entire province of Ontario. Jessica Clement, TVT News. A $1 million funding stream could soon become available to help reduce homelessness in Thunder Bay. Administration is recommending three strategies for Council to look at, including increased advocacy and changing the focus of another funding stream to align with poverty-related projects. The largest part of the file is an $800,000 increase to Community Partnership Fund, bringing that up to $1 million. Local organizations would be required to leverage funds received from the city to get more from other levels of government for all large-scale projects. The memo from administration comes as a result of a December request from at-large councillor Mark Bentz. He was inspired by the tent encampment situation at County Fair Mall to explore other ways the municipality can address what technically is a provincial issue. We can do more to help them. And, and I think everyone knows that. It's just trying to find the best way to help them. I think this is a good uh, step forward in terms of that we'll be using dollars that we can leverage with other programs and actually attract dollars to the city to help more people. The idea would be that the projects that are coming through the Community Partnership Fund perhaps already have either agreements or potential um, opportunities to apply for funding at either the provincial level, the federal level, or through um, foundations or different resources that they are connected with. Bence has heard that one of the biggest needs this fund can help with is transitional housing. If approved, the funding program will be in place next month. 
Another person has died with COVID-19 in our region. It's the 91st COVID-related death recorded by the Thunder Bay District Health Unit during the pandemic. There's also a new outbreak at the Hogarth Riverview Manor long-term care home, this time in the Birch Grove resident area. The health unit is also reporting 108 new cases since its last update on Wednesday. There are now 274 known active cases across the district. There's one additional case at the Regional Health Sciences Centre today. There now are 38 COVID patients in hospital. Three of them are in the ICU. The occupancy rate at the Regional is 100%, while the occupancy rate in intensive care is nearly at 73%. The province's top doctor is forecasting a calm summer in Ontario when it comes to COVID-19. Dr. Kieran Moore, however, notes that Ontarians have to remain vigilant and take advantage of the protection that's now available. Austin Delaney has more. Some encouraging words from Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health. I'm cautiously optimistic that we'll have a better summer. And that has people making plans. I plan to go to lots of patios and come down here for walks and hopefully go up north. I'm looking forward to a great summer. I'm still a little worried about it so we take it day by day but we are planning to get on a plane and go to New Brunswick. For summer plans it means I'm going to get to go and visit family out on the west coast uh, in June and uh, my family who's on the east coast are going to come and visit us here in Toronto so it's great that people uh, feel that they can travel and move around. Dr. Kieran Moore says the numbers are heading in the right direction. COVID found in wastewater declining as well as the test positivity rate and the number of people in hospital. I have to attribute all of this to Ontarians coming forward and maintaining their protection from immunization. We know the protection fades over time uh, and at around five, six months, uh, our protection against severe outcomes decreases uh, significantly. Uh, and so all Ontarians have to step up, come forward, uh, stay up to date with their vaccines and stay protected over the summer. Peel's medical officer of health says people must remain vigilant and get vaccinated. We know that with the Omicron variant circulating, uh, there is still a significant risk uh, of severe outcomes if people haven't actually gotten uh, all the doses that they're eligible for. He says the pandemic is far from over and if you are traveling, make sure you are protected.